Why do your beliefs about money have so much power over you? Why? Now think about this. You trade in paper, it's like clockwork, you've got it. And then the moment that that's real money, everything changes. Suddenly, there's no reset button. And what you know is you can lose money, you can lose capital. And all of a sudden it strikes at the very depth of your being. You become a completely different trader. That's why just because you can trade in simulation doesn't mean that you have it together. You may have a strategy that works when there's not pressure, when there's not uncertainty, when there's not the real possibility of loss. Okay. And you, go out there and it happens, you get hijacked and you do some stupid things and before you know it, you revenge traded, you didn't get into trades, you got out early, you did all the things. And you go, wait a minute, I know how to trade though. Why is this happening to me? Then you redouble your efforts, maybe you look around for better strategy and you go at it again, you're trying this time and darned it the same thing doesn't happen again and again and again and again. The question is, why? You're a pretty smart person. You've done your homework. You've worked hard. And yet when you get in there, when money's real, something changes. And until you master that, you're going to be stuck because what you are really running into is the difference between your new brain, your thinking brain, and a very primitive emotional brain that is totally focused on instinct, survival instinct. And the, the magic that really happens is when you go live and the money's real, that caveman brain of yours doesn't know about, doesn't know about money. He didn't get the memo. However, if you gave him a bunch of money, he wouldn't know what to do. It, it, it's no concept in him. However, what caveman brain knows is threat of loss or opportunity, okay? The deal is this, is when you talk about the intellectual concept of risk management, you know, risk and reward and stuff like that, it's an intellectual concept. To caveman, it's not an intellectual concept. There is a viable threat to his biological existence out there. That's the way that caveman brain interprets. And you're not doing anything. You're trying to hold it down, push it down. And all of a sudden that instinct pops. And what happens is when you hit that instinct, the thinking brain's blown out of the water. It doesn't really matter. You have long established historical patterns, limbic patterns that predate cognition, that fire. When you see that, when you go live, all of a sudden the money is real, but to the caveman, is threat is real. And all of a sudden you start acting as if a saber-toothed tiger is bearing down on you. And what's going to happen, you don't want to lose because if you lose, that's, that's your life. You forfeit your life and become energy for the cat. But what you want to do is you want to fight to your last breath. Yeah, that's what you do. And in trading, that's called revenge trading. Otherwise, what happens is when you get, when you're scared of loss, you might find yourself going, ah, oh, I'm just not going to get in the trade. The instinctual brain decides it's going to halt you from getting into a trade, even though it's a valid setup with good probability. Caveman doesn't think about probability. He thinks of life and death. But we'll even take it one more step further, is that, remember what I said, is that caveman thinks in terms of threat and opportunity. We've got the threat thing big saber tooth cat coming down on you and all of a sudden you go into instinct. You're not thinking at all. You're fighting or running as fast as you can. Fight, fight. When that's successful, what it does is it locks it into pattern. And every time you hit something that the emotional brain sees as a threat, it automatically triggers bypassing thinking. Thinking never showed up. It got blown out of the water. However, there's also the problem of opportunity. You know something? We, Cavemen hunted down mastodons that were 20, 30 times their size. And they had this tusk that would go out 20 feet or more. 
they were dangerous animals. And when you attacked one, even in a well-organized group, there was a high likelihood that somebody was going to get hurt really bad. However, that opportunity there really dazzled them because you got to feed the community, okay? But more than that, you were, you were revered in the community when you were able to make a kill like that. And besides that, you also got first breeding rights, evolution, projecting genes into the future. So what happened is a compromise got made is that you would get excited about opportunity even though it was risky. What we call that is overtrading. So now you've looked at it and saying, you mean I'm running into these instincts? Yeah, they're bypassing thinking. All your strategies just get piled up in a heap. But until you get the mind able to not trigger to those instinctual caveman limbic patterns, you're stuck. Every time you hit the pressure of real loss, a real gain, okay, you're going to trigger to those two phenomenal things, loss, opportunity. In the end, loss to be avoided at all costs because it's a biological threat to your existence. Friends, what happens is that your brain is organizing you for short-term survival. It's not organizing you for long-term thriving. You run into that every day when you're trading live. And you're going to have to learn to deal with it. And it's not going to happen just because you're willing it. You're going to find another strategy. You've got willpower. You have this. I'm going to gut through it. No. You're actually going to have to go in and change the very foundation that evolution built in you about the way you respond to uncertainty. Remember, money is not money to the caveman. Money is power. The power to overcome odds, the power to survive. It's also safety. If you have a whole bunch of money, you're safe. That's how your caveman brain looks at money, like power. It doesn't know about money. It knows about power, though. And your job is to be able to go, you know, that's something I get it now. What I have to do is I have to be able to interrupt the biological instinctual patterns that have been laid down in me since at least six and a half million years ago when we became human beings. But it goes much further than that. And what I'm asking you to do is to drop your silliness, your arrogance, and to think that you can willpower your through something that has been set up in that much evolutionary stone. You're going to have to learn to rebuild it. And what you get is that money is not money to the emotional brain. It is life and death. Once you begin to see that, you begin to say, I now see how my brain has organized these patterns, automatic patterns, that automatically fire when I engage uncertainty and there is the possibility of loss. Our opportunity, they're going to fire and it shoots right past the thinking brain. Your logical self is gone. You may find yourself rationalizing, but your ability to think clearly is gone at that moment unless you retrain it. What I'm encouraging you to do, go to my website, go to my YouTube channel and start really exploring what it's going to take for you to actually build the mind anew that can engage uncertainty and not get frazzled. It can be done, friends. We are human beings. We have been given this great gift of being able to rebuild ourselves, rebuild the mind that engages uncertainty. Okay? You don't have to sit there and go, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Oh my God, here I go again. I did exactly what I said I wouldn't do. No, you can build a mind that engages that. You can build a mind rooted in discipline, rooted in courage, rooted in calming, and rooted in clear thinking that engages uncertainty. It's not natural, okay? It's not the way evolution built you, but as a human being, you can do it. And friends, what I'm asking of you, what I'm inviting you to do is to look at the website, look at our programs, get my book, get the free book, get all the free stuff, kick some tires and really come to the moment of going, you know something, 
I get it. Randy's making sense. I'm talking right out of emotional intelligence. I'm talking about us as an animal. And what happens is unless you can manage our animal nature, the social mammalian that we are underneath this really slick human being look, <laughs> you're not going to achieve the success you're looking for in trading, but you can. Come to the website, watch more of the videos, really start exploring the root course and the individual course. Read my book. Okay? Start getting the knowledge base that allows you to say, I am ready to rebuild the mind. I am going to become the captain of my own destiny. It can be done, but you've got to overcome those survival instincts to do it. Otherwise, you're stuck in the repeating patterns. So which do you want? If you really want to be a successful trader, you have to quit deceiving yourself and saying, no, I, I understand now is that my brain was not built to manage uncertainty very well. It's scared of loss. And at the same time, it can be rebuilt. Come and learn, friends. Come and learn. Take care.